humans have done to the world. My elders have warned me that it is up to my generation to fix things, or else the end of humanity as we know it will occur. Climate change is very much a real thing, and at the current rates we're, that we're going at, it's going to be irreversible in 12 years, according to AFCs. This is all negative, and most of what I've been taught and told has led me to believe that the future is filled with apocalyptic events and hysteria. My generation has so much pressure to fix things, and most of the problems are out of our hands. According to The Guardian, only 100 companies are responsible for 71% of global emissions. That means that individually, um, unless we can get these companies to halt the productions, we are only responsible for 29% of global emissions, and it's mostly out of our hands. Unfortunately, I believe that all of these warnings will prove true. The ice caps are melting, weather is becoming more extreme, and more and more effects are occurring. The world as we know it is ending in some way, but that's the key phrase, as we know it. I don't believe that the Earth is dying. The only thing that's dying is our habits. Last year, in AP Environmental Science, I learned about a beautiful occurrence in nature. We spent a whole unit on forest fires and learned a great deal about them. When hearing about forest fires, all we hear is really about the devastation. However, after a forest fire, new life sprouts up. After a huge devastation, there is a large period of slow growth that ecologists call ecological succession. It is in this time period that new life sprouts up, but may or may not resemble what was previously there. For ecosystems, it's actually an essential process so that certain plants don't take over too much and the buds of life are able to sprout up. An example of ecological succession in action is in 1988 when Yellowstone National Park suffered severe wildfires. However, the beautiful part that I think is that right after wildflowers sprouted up, their seeds and buds were not on the upper forest layer that was burnt. 30 years later, it's hard to see the damage that was done. In this case, it gives a perfect example of a fast period of the earth healing itself. Another example, which is quite fascinating, has to do with Aspen, Colorado. Aspen was founded as a mining camp during the Colorado Silver Boom. Before humans demolished the surrounding area, it was filled with evergreens and trees similar to that. During this time, people cut down the, those trees for logging and heating homes and such. This left the forest area disturbed, and during that time, aspens filled the space that the evergreens once filled. Aspens are a miraculous type of plant that typically grow during the period of ecological succession, and they fill the area of disturbance. In my lifetime, I've seen aspen trees fill in after a disturbance. At my family's cabin in Wyoming, several of the pine trees were killed by beetle kill. For a few years, the area was empty, and then we started to see baby aspen trees. Currently, those aspens are pretty tall, and they have been able to regenerate life and replace the pine spots. Aspens are adaptive, and they exist in some places sort of as a transition and are part of the healing process that nature takes. Aspens are a great example of nature healing itself from human damage. This is fascinating because in a few hundred years, Aspen, Colorado will not be filled with aspens, but rather instead go back to its previous landscapes of evergreens. Nature will adapt and it's constantly changing. It's just rare that we're able to see these changes in a lifetime. Our, this kind of goes back to what Rachel was talking about with the 24 hours example, but it's a different perspective. Um, it's challenging to visualize the large picture, and I think when it comes to climate change, it's challenging for us to think greater than ourselves. In the cosmic calendar, scientists have put our existence into a comprehensible scale. If the Big Bang happened on January 1st, then Earth and life occurred early in September. All of human civilization, not modern civilization, but all of human civilization, um, has only existed for the last 14 seconds on December 31st. And in that time, like Rachel said, we've ruined a lot. So since our perspectives are completely different than the time scale of existence, we can't see the whole period of ecological successions, even with something as simple as the case in Aspen, Colorado. So it's really hard for us to comprehend that if not in our lifetimes or the next dozen generations, sometime the Earth will recover from her damage. We just have to adapt to our current consequences. It may seem like I've rambled on and on, and in some ways I have, but what I'm trying to get at is that yes, 
The human world is rapidly changing, but we, like the forest, are adaptable. Some things have to die in order for new life to occur. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 24, Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and it dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. This means that in order for new seeds to grow, the kernel of wheat has to fall to the ground and die. And in this case, the earth has to, you know, constantly change. Okay. <laughs> People won't be able to deny climate change forever, and the irreversible effects that will occur soon will really only affect the kernel ways we live. We may not be able to drive everywhere we go. We may not have to be able to heat and chill our homes instantaneously. We may not be able to fly anywhere, anytime, either. We, as humans, have existed at a time without these unnecessary luxuries, so we will surely be able to progress forwards to a new reality. If we compare climate change to the process that nature takes after disturbances like wildfires, right now the forest is burning and it hasn't stopped. We're about to enter the period in which all the trees are burnt and the soil is black. Once we realize that we can live differently than we currently do and change our actions, I believe that the wildflowers will start sprouting, and eventually, in several hundred years, a new forest will appear. In Revelation 21, the scripture says, Then I saw a new heaven and earth, and for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He'll wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Usually we don't include the book of Revelations because it's scary and bad things after bad thing happens. However, it's perfect for the circumstance because despite all the scary, it gives a beautiful picture of the future. In the book of Revelations, there was a new heaven and a new earth. This tells me that instead of nothing, we will have a new reality. As God continues to work and Jesus has said, something new will rise out of it. I don't mean this in a way that we must abandon all hope and accept the truths without fight. Yes, we are starting to witness the consequences of our actions and they're only going to get worse. But no, that does not mean we should just give up. We need to do our part and lessen the effects. In a few months, I will be going off to Western Washington University to study environmental science, and I chose this major because I'm so passionate about it. I'm, trying, I'm going to protect our world as much as I can and have a great feeling that enough people will come together and work with God to better this world. There will be changes, but we, like forests, can adapt.